Hi everyone, welcome back. In this short video, I'll show you how to use the estimates of ultimate loss we calculated using loss development factors to calculate loss reserves in IBNR. Let's get started. We ended part two of this series by estimating ultimate loss using the loss development method. We used the paid loss amounts in the last diagonal of this triangle and our recently calculated age to ultimate factors. Next, we're going to simplify things by looking at the data from the perspective of a single point in time, specifically 1231-2020. The data along the last diagonal in our paid loss triangle is evaluated as of 1231-2020. We're going to keep just that evaluation and set the triangle aside. Next, we'll calculate the age and months of each accident year. Accident year 2020 is at age 12 because 1231-2020 is 12 months after the beginning of the accident year. The ages for the earlier accident years are calculated accordingly. We're going to keep the age to ultimate factors we calculated previously. Here, we match each factor to the accident year that corresponds to its age. This table includes all of the information we need to estimate loss reserves and IBNR as of 1231-2020. Let's include a row for totals and some column labels while we're at it. Note that our estimated ultimate loss, which we calculated in part two, equals the product of the age to ultimate factors and the paid loss as of 1231-2020. Next, let's calculate the corresponding estimated unpaid loss. This equals our ultimate loss less the paid loss as of 1231-2020. To help see why this is the case, consider this graph where the bar represents ultimate loss. Ultimate loss equals paid loss plus unpaid loss. Graphically, it looks like this. Here's one way to think of it. Ultimate loss is the final amount paid once all claims have been settled. It often takes several years for this to occur. At any point in time before then, a portion of the ultimate loss will be paid and the remaining portion unpaid. In our example, we can calculate the estimated unpaid loss as of 1231-2020 by taking the difference between our estimated ultimate loss and the paid loss as of 1231-2020. This terminology for paid and unpaid loss makes things simple, but the more common term for unpaid loss is loss reserves. Let's change our titles accordingly. Next, let's include case reserves in our exhibit. Case reserves are estimates of future loss payments for specific claims. They are a type of loss reserve established by claims adjusters on a claim by claim basis. We need to refer to the original source data underlying our analysis to populate the case reserves in our table. Typically, these amounts are provided to actuaries as part of a loss reserve analysis. Let's refine our bar graph to include case reserves. As we mentioned, case reserves are a type of loss reserve. The remaining portion of the loss reserve is called IBNR. IBNR, or incurred but not reported, is the portion of loss reserves not covered by case reserves. IBNR is typically calculated by actuaries. As suggested in our bar graph, loss reserves equal case reserves plus IBNR. Let's calculate the IBNR in our example. It is equal to the estimated loss reserves as of 1231-2020 minus the corresponding case reserves. And that's all for this video. In part four, I'll share some caveats about the loss development method that you should be aware of. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below. If you found this information helpful, let me know by liking and subscribing. Thanks and see you again soon.